The things that we've been seeing on our screens from Hamas are atrocities, obviously. But the media have said that these atrocities, they're really missing context. The context they are providing, well, that context is a bunch of lies. There are four myths generally propagated by the left around the history of Israel and the Palestinians. These myths matter because they lead people into a peculiar moral relativism whereby attempted murder or successful murder of Jews is excused, and meanwhile, the evil human rights violations of the Palestinians are minimized. Myth number one, Israel is historically Muslim territory. This is a pure and absolute lie. Israel is historically Jewish territory. According to the Bible and certain interpretations of contemporaneous archeology, span Joshua entered the land of Israel in 1400 BC. The Kingdom of David was founded around 1000 BC. The first Temple of Solomon was built in approximately 957 BC. The second temple was built in approximately 515 BC. The Hasmonean Dynasty was founded in 166 BC. Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 BC, and the Jews exiled from Israel in 136 CE after the defeat of the Bar Kokhba revolt. The Romans, in an attempt to shame the Jews, renamed the area Palestine as an insult after the Jews' historic enemy, the Philistines. Even during the exile, there was continuous Jewish presence in the land. Islam, which is the religion of the Palestinian Arabs, was not even founded until the 7th century CE or AD. No independent Arab state has ever existed in the area known as Palestine. Myth number two, Israel is the cause of the failure of land partition in the Middle East. This is, again, a pure lie. In 1917, the British promised the Jews the entire area of Palestine, at the time, Israel and Transjordan, which is today's Jordan. In 1920, the Arabs began pogroms, a mass murder of Jews, in Jerusalem, as a sign of anger at the British mandate in Palestine. In 1922, the British government, in response, announced in a white paper that the Transjordan area, 70% of Palestine, would be sliced off and made an Arab state. That would become Jordan. In 1937, the Peel Commission recommended a rump state for the Jews, in which the British would retain control over Jaffa and Jerusalem, the Arabs would get the entire Negev and nearly the entirety of Judea and Samaria, and the Jews would get a tiny swath of territory along the coast, including Tel Aviv and Haifa. In 1939, the British, in response again to Arab pressure, restricted Jewish immigration to Palestine just as the Nazis began World War II and just before the Holocaust. Nonetheless, the Jews sided with the Brits, the Arabs sided with Hitler. In 1948, the British mandate ended and Israel declared its independence. David Ben-Gurion read the proclamation of independence to 13 other members of the Israel Provisional National Council. Israel had taken its place among the nations of the world. In 1964, with the Arabs still in full control of the Gaza Strip and West Bank, the Palestine Liberation Organization was founded, calling for the destruction of Israel. Here is a contemporaneous British report on the first chairman of the Palestine Liberation Organization. One of the most extreme anti-Israeli politicians in the Arab world, Ahmed El Shuked, the leader of the Palestine Liberation Organization. As the spokesman for one million Palestine refugees, he's fanned the flames of hatred for Israel with unflagging energy. In 1967, the Arab League announced the three no's. No peace, no recognition, no negotiations. With all of Israel's enemies mobilizing against it, Israel launched a preemptive strike on the Egyptian Air Force, inaugurating the 1967 Six-Day War. This ended with Israel gaining miraculously the Sinai Desert, the Golan Heights, the Gaza Strip, Judea and Samaria, now known as the West Bank, as well as the entirety of Jerusalem. In 1973, the Arabs launched all-out war again, this time on Yom Kippur. Israel survived and gained territory. In 1979, Israel gave the Sinai back to Egypt in return for peace. In 1993, Israel agreed to the Oslo Accords, which promised a step-by-step -step process to establish a Palestinian state. In 1998, Israel conceded yet more territory to the Palestinian Authority under the prime ministership of Benjamin Netanyahu. In 2000, Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak offered Yasser Arafat, the terrorist leader of the Palestinian Authority, 91% control over the West Bank in contiguous territory and an Israeli security presence along 15% of the border with Jordan. Arafat walked away from the table and began the Second Intifada, a massive terror wave that ended with the death of thousands of Jews. In 2005, Israel unilaterally withdrew from the Gaza Strip. Hamas immediately took it over and began using it as a base for terrorist activity. That continues until this day. In 2008, Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert offered even more than Barak in terms of territory, with some land swaps to maintain Jewish-populated areas in exchange for some Israeli territory. 
Omer even offered to relinquish Israeli sovereignty at the Temple Mount, the holiest site in Judaism, as well as the entire old city of Jerusalem to a five-member non-sovereign international trusteeship comprising Israel, the PA, Jordan, the US, and Saudi Arabia. PA head Mahmoud Abbas walked away without a counteroffer. Myth number three, Israel expelled all Palestinian Arabs from British Mandate Palestine. This is, again, a lie. Israel's founding documents asked Arabs to stay. Israel's Declaration of Independence, in the middle of an ongoing war with Arab nations, reads, quote, We appeal, in the very midst of the onslaught launched against us now for months, to the Arab inhabitants of the state of Israel to preserve peace and participate in the upbuilding of the state on the basis of full and equal citizenship and due representation in all its provisional and permanent institutions. Debate has raged for decades over how many Arabs left the nascent state of Israel thanks to expulsion and how many left because they were told to leave by their own leaders. An estimated 250,000 to 300,000 refugees left before their homes were even in a war zone. We didn't compel them to leave. They left on their own will, or rather on the will of the Arab leaders, who advised them even before trouble started. The collapse of Arab society during the 1947-48 war, leaving many Arabs without a means of support, has been well documented. Israel will do everything in its power to help the resettlement of these refugees by paying compensation and by other means. Hundreds of thousands of these refugees ended up in the West Bank and Gaza, which remained Arab territory until 1967. Furthermore, Arab nations refused to take in hundreds of thousands of Arabs, turning their co-religionists into refugees who have maintained that status for literally decades, a situation unparalleled in human history. Fully 62% of such refugees live outside the West Bank and Gaza Strip, according to the UNRWA. Meanwhile, Israel, tiny Israel, took in over 800,000 Jews expelled from Arab land between 1948 and 1951 and never asked for land to be returned to those Jews. Myth number four, Israel is an apartheid state. Israel is most certainly not an apartheid state. Arab citizens of Israel have the same rights as Jewish citizens. 20% of all citizens of Israel are Arab. The vast majority of Palestinians live under Palestinian rule in the West Bank. All Arabs in the Gaza Strip lived under Hamas rule. Israel's population, again, is 20% Arab. Arab parties have sat in the Israeli government, and Arab sits on Israel's Supreme Court. There are zero Jews living under Palestinian rule. The only apartheid state is any state of Palestine. All of these myths have consequences. All of these lies have consequences. They lead to a pseudo-sophisticated context that allows for the murder of Jews. It allows people in the West to believe that the grievances that are openly articulated by the Palestinian Authority, Islamic Jihad, and Hamas are actually about territory. Hamas openly calls for the murder of every Jew in the region. The Palestinian Authority gives actual bounties to the families of terrorists. Islamic Jihad has the same exact goals as Hamas. When evil people say they want to wipe Jews off the face of the earth, we ought to listen, not make up silly excuses as to why they don't actually mean what they say. The consequences of buying your own lies, not even their lies, your own lies, is dead Jews. The world has witnessed the heinous attack by Hamas terrorists against innocent Israeli citizens. This massive and devastating attack killed over a thousand Israeli men, women, children, babies. Thousands more were injured, kidnapped, held hostage. This sworn enemy of Israel will stop at nothing to slaughter every single Jew and claim Israel as their own. 